Good morning. My name's Alison Crompton and I'm the head teacher of Middleton Technology School. Middleton Technology School is an outstanding school and Ofsted have told us that on two occasions. It's a school that succeeds against a background of deprivation and we're going to show you the secrets of our success. If you work in my senior leadership team, then I expect you at 10 past eight every morning to be meeting and greeting all the students. <laughs> Good morning, have a nice day. Good morning, Eamon, how are you? Good morning. Schools will say they do those things, but do they do them honestly day in, day out, every single morning, because we do. Middleton Technology School is in Rochdale, one of Britain's poorest boroughs. With high unemployment and household income levels amongst the lowest in the country. There is a great deal of disadvantage in the immediate environs of the school and most of our children on entry will come with just below the national average point score and they will come with weak, particular literacy skills. We are talking about children, some of whom have significant disadvantage. But the school has never allowed disadvantage to mean low standards. In 2008, 80.2% gained five A-star to C's, 63.4% including English and Maths. When might it cool really, really slowly? Jot down your reasons for thinking that. Key stage two to four, contextual value added, is anywhere between 1,035 and 1,050, and that's exceptionally high. It puts us in the top 1% of schools in the country in terms of the progress that the children make. No, we've got y squared minus 49. So what exactly is the school doing that's making it such a success? Our five secrets are success. Number one, consistent student routines. So we've all got equipment out. Has anybody not got anything with them today? Are we all OK? Yes? Mm -hmm. Everybody's fine. Good. All right, now. We expect then, as part of the school routine, that when they go into any lesson, they set out on their desk pen, pencil, ruler and their journal, and the teacher can see at a glance that that's there. They generally do it without any discussion. We, we have equipment out, we have journals out, so that we know that they have enough things ready for the day. If they don't, it's very straightforward. We operate a zero tolerance. They get a red card and they are placed in a, in a detention which lasts for an hour after school. And therefore, we have little of that issue, really. Keep moving. Same people, just chase those down the corridor, please, so yeah, those girls. Our senior staff are very present on the corridors. They're very obvious everywhere throughout the school. Uh, and as a result, they lead by example, and the expectations are that the children will behave and the expectations are that the children will learn and make progress. Our five secrets of success. Number two, quality teaching and learning. All our children are set on ability on entry to the school because it's about targeted, precise teaching. You grew some crystals and they grew really quick. And what size are they? Are they small? Are they big? They're small. They're really small. Brilliant. They're constantly assessed. And if we think that they are in the wrong class at their wrong time in their education, we move them until they catch up again and we place them back in the appropriate class. I'm not a proponent of mixed ability teaching. I think it has to be very precise, it has to be very targeted, and it has to be well differentiated. And I think that that perhaps is something that not many schools do to such a degree. It is a lot of extra work, but we're all enthusiastic and we all you know, follow the ethos of the school and we all want our students to succeed. One of the good things is they tell us our levels frequently and then they tell us how we can improve on those levels and they call them the smart targets. The GCSE extra lessons are really good and teachers go out of their way to help you if you've got a problem or if you need some extra help with something. What's the meaning of what you see? Who can tell me what this one meant? England flag. England flag, right, good, excellent. So for you... The monitoring of teachers in the school is done throughout the year mainly through performance management, but also there's 
this idea as well of informal monitoring, you know, everyone's happy for someone to pop into the classroom, watch what they're doing, take ideas. You need to turn your book sideways. Turn them upside down. I don't think any staff in the school find it unnerving once they see that actually it's not a, a look at what you're doing wrong. It's a supportive way of making sure that you can be the best teacher and give your students the best as well. Excellent. So, what's the connotations then of a bright, blue, brilliant blue sky in the background? Is it happy? It's happy. Good. Our five secrets of success. Number three, effective leadership at all levels. Did you have a good response from the staff for that? Yeah, we did, yeah, and they're very enthusiastic about the activities. Very I've got a big senior leadership team of ten because it's a very, very busy school with lots of initiatives that, that happen. One of the things I would say about, about the quality of, of leadership in the school, which is, as Ofsted commented, it, is that it's outstanding at every level. Do you want me to get Henry to write to them? It's about having the confidence and belief in, in the abilities of your staff in their potential and being able to unlock that potential. Now, if you just look at the board, that was the source which each of your group has been able to see. Like most of the staff, history teacher David Tootle has been given the opportunity to lead. Ever since joining as an NQT four years ago, he's been responsible for leading in learning, an initiative that encourages collaboration between different departments. The idea is that to show the students that we can transfer our skills from one subject to the other and that although the content's different, all skills are useful to all different subjects. And it's good for the staff because we get to work with other departments that we don't normally work with. We start with very young teachers, so we start with teachers when they have completed successfully their NQT year. We, we look to identify those teachers who we believe have got potential at that point and we offer them a teaching and learning initiative. They are paid £1,000 a year, which is, is not an inconsiderable sum for a young teacher, to lead on something in the school that is of value to the school, um, that is really going to move an area of the school on. Our five secrets of success. Number four, supportive professional development. We're going to carry on with the training that we started last week with um, some training today on the new assessment tracker that we're bringing into school. We have an awful lot of staff training and the head believes in a lot of in-service training where teachers within our school lead other teachers within the school. We don't spend a lot of money on bringing um, other experienced people in. We tend to take people from this school and let them lead the new initiatives. When you're doing your CEF, you may want to know the percentage of children in year seven. There is a vast amount of training that goes on throughout the year and all levels of staff are involved and that's very, very important for their personal staff development. Also, it's about creating that um, team spirit on the staff. Some people are very IT experienced and others are less so. And it encourages that sort of peer coaching, which we, as teachers, try to get our students to do. And so it's very important that we practice that ourselves. We tend to split down a lot of our training time into additional twilight hours. If we use just an hour after school, people are much fresher and it also gives us the chance to have the whole of the staff or groups of the staff working on the same things and sharing that shared vision and expertise. Or you can click table on the top bar menu. I think the school is very successful because uh, the vast majority of the staff are extremely proud to work here. I think the staff are encouraged, um, we're trained, uh, there's positions of responsibility at all levels which allows everyone to progress in their careers. Our five secrets of success. Number five, inclusive pastoral care. We start very, very early with our transition activities. We don't start in year six, we start in year five. And what that does is it allows us to get to know those children very well, but it equally allows our children, our young sports leaders, for example, to pass on the values and expectations of the school to those younger children so that when they come to school, they know how high our expectations are. Well done, fantastic. Who can read me the second objective, please? Yeah, go on to develop the understanding of what skills are needed to play sport. When the students come to us in the September because they visit us before, they are more comfortable and more confident in their 
new environment as they are used to seeing the school and seeing some members of staff. It helps us know our way around in case like we get lost when we're here. Yeah, we do come to this school. And all the teachers are great and I love the PE time because it's really good and I love all like the obstacle courses. I think the, the fact that we're really successful in this school is the fact that we have a real say in how the schools run with the school council and the student voice and all of our opinions are regarded and took seriously. What do you think about that league system and the gold cards? Do you like it or do you not like it? Do you think it could be improved? Okay. Key stage three it was all right, but key stage four now yeah. it's like just... Yeah, it's like we're growing out a bit, a bit now, it's a bit childish. We react to what the children want, so we do lots of pupil voice surveys, we work with the parents, we have parents in telling us what they would like, what the way they would like their children to be doing in school. So it's, it's sort of giving them the information that they want to try and centre around what is going on in our local community. My friend doesn't believe in sex education in school right. at all. Yeah. So it's not always easy in a setting like this to, to get parents engaged, but we work very, very hard at that. We are interested in what they've got to say. I mean, I think it's a really positive thing to show my but I've got three boys and I think it's important for them to be included as much as girls in, in sex and relationship education. We are a highly inclusive school, so I believe that those students for whom school is a struggle in terms of their behaviour should not be excluded from school. We have a raft of interventions. One of the things that the school is so successful at is putting in the right kind of in intervention for each individual child. One of the things that we do in school is we run um, the Pyramid Club, an after-school fun club for vulnerable children. Today we've done fruit tasting and a lot of the children have never experienced the type of foods that we are tasting today. The melons are really nice. Right. Right. And, what, and you've never tried, what was it Katie, you've never tried? Mango, pineapple, blackberries, and apricot. And did you like those? You, you get them from the shop, did you? Yeah. Right, brilliant. We do a lot of teaching them how to build friendships and maintain friendships, as well as actually participating in fun activities. So it promotes their own confidence and self-esteem, which in turn obviously helps them be better learners within the school. You coming in? I take a group of Year 8 boys it's to try and build their confidence and self-esteem through problem solving and outdoor activities. Quite often at that age, when they're coming to 13, 14, there's a lot of peer pressure on them to be more grown up and to get into gang culture. And this gives them a chance to be children and to play safely. We make loads of these dens, we make fires sometimes. And uh, it's all right. I make new friends. Oh yeah. <laughs> and get like different people coming each week. Like it's just, it's not really fun at home because it's better I'd rather stay here and do stuff like this because it's more active. They really feel a sense of achievement because they've worked together as a team. I think my strong advice to any heads who will find themselves in schools in challenging circumstances is to concentrate on getting the basics right in the school, which are about the routines particular. You tackle one area of the school first, you get the consistency and the, and the calibre that you require there before you move into other areas. Mm -hmm.